today I'm on a day trip to Yala from Patani. This is because Yala's inland and this tour has been predominantly a coastal ride. If I don't go to Yala today, I'm going to miss it out completely because Yala is landlocked. Don't really know what to expect. I'm a little bit nervous after last night being picked up off the street by the security forces, but yeah, it should be okay. Uh, it's about 45 k's to Yala, so a round trip of 90. It's been very slow going today. Uh, the roads are not great. I can't get much above 10 kilometers an hour. I've quite a long way to go. So it's gonna take me longer than I thought to get to Yala. <laughs> Scenic enough, very rural all day. Been riding on these kinds of small roads now for best part of two, three hours. Oh, I was just shaking the bike to bits. We've made it to Yalla. Just one province to go. Coming into Yalla city and of course another security checkpoint. I'm gonna turn the camera off. Oh, maybe I'll keep it going. No, I will. I'll keep it going. I think I'm okay. Yala's got the feel of a small provincial town, although it's a capital for the province. Uh, if it's worth travelling all day for a detour to come and have a look, I'm not really sure, but yeah, it's done now. After a quick visit, lunch and coffee, it yeah. was time for me to ride back across country to Patani. Well, there we go, that was a fun day out. Made it a lot easier because I didn't have all my bags with me. They were left back at the hotel, so. Okay, so I'm back after my fairly uneventful trip to Yala. Before I lock my bike up, I'm gonna have to check the bolts because that ride to Yala shook the bike to pieces and it's shook the bolt out here on the rack. It loosened this one, I've tightened that up already. So I'm gonna check all the bolts first and then I'm gonna replace the bolt for the rack. Okay, I've just checked this bolt on the rack. Look how loose this is. That's nearly ready to come off as well. Well, I've said this before, but this is why in your toolkit you should always carry some spare bolts. Like this. So, just need to find a standard bolt that's usually used for the bolt cages. That should fit. That should be fine. Yep. That's all right, sorry. Okay, missing bolt replaced. All the other bolts have been checked. Job done. I set off from Patani quite early this morning, hoping to get a good bit of riding done 
before it got too hot. Uh, looks like it's going to rain, but not much you can do about that. It's nice run through the countryside. I'll be getting into Naratiwap province probably in about a couple of hours. I'm probably going to stop filming these checkpoints now there's so many of them and there's getting more and more and more I don't want it to be a constant filming of these places I think you get the idea coming here today there are a lot of armed officers on the streets I didn't film them I'm a little bit wary uh, unless they ask permission, but yeah, it's just getting more and more. Been a long, slow, challenging ride today. A lot of these kind of roads, quite a lot with sand on like this. It's hard to control a bike when you're going fast. I'm glad I set off early this morning, about quarter to seven. <laughs> I'd never have uh, got to Naratiwa in the light otherwise. Ah, put the camera down. Can't cycle on this. Yeah, can't keep control of the bike on this sand, even though it doesn't look like much. Just arrived into Natiwa and it's been a long hard day. A little bit disappointing really because I'd been expecting a good chunk of it to be a coastal ride but that didn't pan out at all. None of it was a coastal ride even though the ocean's quite close. Take a look at this, all the motorbikes, they've got their saddles up to show they haven't got bombs. On my way to the border I came across these two fine looking fellows and I couldn't resist taking a few photos. I'm so, so close to the Malaysian border now. I can almost smell it. After five weeks and 2,200 kilometers of riding, we're finally here at the Thai-Malaysian border. Wow. <laughs> wow. Malaysia. Thailand. The Kalatan River, it runs for a few hundred kilometres, runs from east to west, and forms the natural barrier between Malaysia and Thailand. 
be so easy to swim that distance from one country to the next. And as you go upstream, going westwards, it gets narrower. I'm on my way to Sungai Kolok, uh, but on the way I've been stopped twice by security forces wanting to know where I'm going. <laughs> and they seem to be very happy that I'm going to uh, Kolok. This border area is where most of the separatist violence takes place, which probably explains why I've seen so many armed security forces personnel around. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit worrying to be honest. This is it. I've reached my final destination, as they say. Okay, guys. Got my ticket now. It's 12 o'clock tomorrow. I arrives in Bangkok the following day at 10.50. It's gonna be 23 hours on the train and then I've got to transfer another six hours back to Karat. So hopefully I'll be there in Karat in two days. And that was the end of the tour, a ride that took over 40 days and covered more than 2,200 kilometers. A ride that started in Hua Hin, took me down the picturesque coastline of Prachuap Kirikan before cutting across country and continuing down the west coast. After enjoying some of the best beaches that Thailand has to offer in Khao Lak, Phuket and Krabi, I got to enjoy some beautiful peaceful coastland and inland rides as the only tourist and western face for the last eight days of the ride. Thanks to all of you for coming along on this tour. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you back in the UK for the next video.